Hello and happy Monday everybody. This is Joelle Simone Anthony the Grave Woman and it's almost 2019 and I'm so excited to kind of start something new with the upcoming new year to share with you all. One of my favorite, I mean absolute favorite things to do is to go to the movies or watch movies here at home and most of the time when I watch movies I don't just look at the story that's being presented to me, I guess maybe because I'm a funeral director and I absolutely love sociology. I kind of look for how the deaths of characters and some of the grief that they may be experiencing is reflected in the stories being told, whether it be a Netflix movie, a Hulu movie, a television movie, or even, you know, a movie at the theater. So I thought it would be a really cool idea to kind of give my perspective on the movies that I enjoy um, and watch and maybe eventually some of the movies that you all suggest for me um, from the perspective just from my personal thoughts. Not necessarily as a funeral director but just the way I see things and maybe this segment will help you all recognize some of the grief that is portrayed in films whether they be mainstream or television um and we can just have some really good open discussions and conversations if you see movement or hear anything in the background it's actually my dog um we're transitioning transitioning our back room into a studio space so as you can see everything is a little bit different and i figured i'd use this part of the room and set it up for you know talking about movies so you guys are going to see some different backgrounds and some new things coming up in 2019 but I just wanted to make this brief introduction before I get into the first movie that I'm going to review which is the movie Bird Box that deb debuted on Netflix about two or three weeks ago. Now if you haven't heard of Bird Box, you have to be living under a rock because there's so many funny memes and just things going on online talking about the movie and making fun of some of the scenes in the movie. And I have to admit, they are hilarious. But um, I wanted to have a discussion about some of the grief and the types of suicide that I saw in the movie Bird Box. So without further ado, here we go. Before we get started, I want to go ahead and give a spoiler alert. Um, and let you know that I will be discussing very specific aspects of the movie. So if you don't want to ruin your watching experience, if you haven't already seen the movie, I would suggest that you watch the movie and then come back at a later time and watch this video. In order to do that so that you don't forget, you can just click on the Add to Library tab and click the icon that says save for later and this video along with any others that you add for my channel will be listed in your save for later and you can access them at a later So time. as usual I have tons of notes so if you see me looking down or away from the camera it's because I'm reviewing my notes um, and that's just that but we're gonna go ahead and start off with the opening of the movie Bird Box where Sandra Bullock's char character Mallory is having a conversation with the children excuse me who she's named boy and girl now immediately when I saw this I I said to myself you know what she's trying to disassociate from these children for whatever reason because it was the beginning of the movie we didn't know anything about what was going on and why she had disassociated but she was trying to distance herself emotionally which is what dissociation is or taking away the identity and relatability to the individuals which happened to be the two children boy or girl um basically she was putting up an emotional barrier that limits the opportunity to fully experience loss that's what i saw when i saw the opening first few moments of the film and a lot of times we as everyday individuals reflect or display a disassociation in our lives after maybe a major loss through the expression of grief whether it be through someone actually passing away or you know whether it's a bad breakup a lot of times particularly in loss of um through grief or especially a bad breakup 
we're afraid to open ourselves up again because we don't want to feel that feeling of loss that we've experienced initially that's caused us to want to dissociate in the first place. So that was the first thing that I noticed. The second thing that I noticed was that when she was speaking to the children, one of the first things that she said, or one of the main things that she said was, this is only a place. There is nothing more that we need from it. So that said to me that maybe she didn't have the the connection to a home which is extremely important when you think about grief and when you think about death um just think about the fact that a home is a lot of in a lot of cases is where you create memories with someone it's where you share experiences and where events happen in life such as births weddings you know things happen dinners meals things like that so when she said that it immediately told me that okay she's really dealing with some issues associated with grief and loss and a major shift in her reality one of the next things that i want to get into i'm going to fast forward a little bit without telling too much of the story but in this movie the bird box we see characters who are affected by something that they call creatures right and one of the things that I noticed in the scene where um, they were at the hospital and then she and her sister got in the car and left were that was that everything was happening so fast there was very little time to actually respond. Um, when her sister killed herself in the car, that in combination with everything else that was going on at the time begin the process of some really deeply rooted unresolved grief. Now unresolved grief is just grief that doesn't come to an end um, and it really has an effect on us in ways that we may not notice initially such as disassociation right which we talked about just a few moments ago. So we learn from watching maybe the first 15 minutes of the video that she really didn't have a relationship with any of her parents so her ability or either of her parents so her ability to connect with individuals was already on shaky ground when she learned that she was pregnant you saw that in the hospital the doctor actually gave her the information for giving up her unborn child for adoption and it was something that she was considering before everything actually went to hell in the movie so losing her sister abruptly and then losing her perception of reality her individuality by becoming pregnant losing her partner who i guess just simply walked out of her life when he found out that she was pregnant all of those things are rooted in what I believe were unresolved or created what I believe was unresolved grief. Another thing that I saw in the movie um, that was very interesting was their expression of triggers. Now, when you're talking about loss and grief, a trigger is something that comes at any given time you're not necessarily sure what it's going to be initially but you learn as you go along maybe seeing something on television maybe seeing a certain color maybe hearing a certain song will take your mind back to a certain place and trigger you to express your grief through emotion and what uh, Mallory experienced in the movie where, that I saw um, was when she and the other individuals who were running from the creatures were watching CNN and she saw the horse running alongside the car. That immediately triggered a memory of her sister and you saw for the first time she actually broke down a little bit before she caught herself. So I thought that that was really interesting. I know for me personally, one of my triggers when thinking about a close one, loved one who's passed away I'll give you two of them. Um, my grandfather was a um, Omega. So anytime I see anything related to the Omega sci-fi, it kind of triggers, triggers something within me and pulls on my heart a little bit. The second trigger that I know I've experienced personally is when I see anything related to the Dallas Cowboys because my Uncle Mark, who I've talked about several times in several videos, 
was a huge Dallas Cowboys fan. So every time that I see something that has either the Omega Sci-Fi or the Dallas Cowboys on it, it just really triggers something in me. And I don't cry anymore, but for a long time, whenever I saw anything associated with those two things, it would make me break down. I don't care if I was in public. I don't care if I was by myself, surrounded by people. I couldn't control it because it just reminded me so much of them. So if you're not aware of what your triggers are, just start to pay attention to things that make you respond emotionally when thinking about someone that you've lost or a loss that you've experienced. I want to talk a little bit about the panic of the public. One of the reasons or the main reason that the public and by the public I mean all of the extras and all of the people that were in the house with Mallory. Everyone in the video was essentially running from death because they saw that whenever someone looked at a creature or was affected by the creatures that were causing the chaos and the crisis around them, it caused them to harm and kill themselves. So this entire movie is about running from death. Also, it showed that the majority of people in society don't want to harm them. It is what happens to the eyes when those who see the creatures look at them. So I think that was really all a representation of perception of death. And the reason I say that is because in the movie they said that those who suffered from forms of psychosis and mental health issues weren't affected by the creatures. They didn't cause them to kill themselves. It actually caused them to want to make others look at the creatures um, and essentially leading them to kill themselves. So a lot of times those in our society who are suffering suffering from mental health is higher risk of committing suicide. I think that their perception of death was not a fearful one. Maybe their perception of death was one of, oh my gosh, this is going to be so beautiful because I'll finally be free. I'll finally have peace. I'll finally be whatever it is that they were seeking. And those who were running from death and seeking shelter from the creatures had a fear of death and a fear of harming themselves, which the individuals who have the mental health issues in the film did not have. Because, okay, what was his name? Uh, what was his name? The guy that worked at the grocery store. He, Fish Finger. Um, what was his name? Uh, Charlie's co-worker Fish Finger. He said that Fish Finger had been in jail and was kind of crazy, right? And then the gentleman that they let in the house. I cannot remember his name, but I'll post a picture of him somewhere in the video. He claimed that he was a psychologist or psychiatrist that escaped a mental health institution when in reality he was the individual who suffered from mental health issues and he had drawn the creatures and he drew them in such a passionate way and so many times as if he were in love with them or if they were beautiful or as if they were beautiful to him so the fact that the individuals who looked upon the creatures eyes changed I think that represented their perception of death changing um, in the film so I think that was a very interesting hap um, a very interesting example of how perspective and perception have an effect on the way that we view death. It also showed that in seeking shelter from what was coming, connections were formed in trying to escape death. Necess not necessarily connecting with individuals that you would normally connect with but people made connections that would never happen there was a scene where two of the characters the drug addict that was portrayed and the cop trainee that was portrayed when they first met and the guy was kind of coming on to her she said blatantly not a chance in hell but a few minutes later Mallory walked on them walked in on them making love in the laundry room so it showed me the connection that death has the power to encourage 
between those who are experiencing loss. And if you think about it, a lot of times when we are experiencing a loss, whether it be through death or any other experience, one of the things that we do is humans a lot of time is reach out for uh, reach out to others for comfort so i thought that was a very interesting portrayal in the movie so i'm gonna go ahead now and jump into the characters that were in the house and i'm not gonna go into all of the characters but there were certain things about certain characters that did point out so i want to go ahead and explore those the first character that i want to talk about is douglas so Douglas was the gentleman in the movie whose wife actually saved Mallory's life and this she died saving Mallory which was very honorable and selfless of her but her husband Douglas was the complete opposite and he actually said it when in his talk with Mallory when they were alone in the kitchen but Doug, Doug, Douglas was the portrayed as the pessimist in the film he also talked a lot about grief in his life through losing his wives beforehand not really having connections with people around him because of his personality and that in combination with his personality and his drinking problem to me represented his fear of being alone when his wife died saving Mallory's life he lost the one person in the world that understood him so he was very angry he was very angry and he took it out on just about everybody that came into the house but what was interesting about Douglas even though he was portrayed as being so selfless I'm sorry so selfish and so hateful and such a bad personality he actually ended up sacrificing his life to save Mallory um, and Tom so Douglas was a very interesting character to me and to me he represented the stage of anger um, as it relates to grief. Two manners of death expressed in this movie. The first one is homicide. And the homicides are imposed by those who are not affected by looking at the creatures upon those who are running from looking at the creatures. The second form of, the second manner of death expressed in the movie is suicide. As a reference, I just want to go ahead and explain that according to David Emil Dur Durkheim, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. There are four types of suicide. Um, now, Durkheim is a French sociologist who has categorized suicide into the following categories. The first being egotistic, the second being altruistic, the third being anomic, and the fourth being fatalistic. The type of suicide that was reflected in the, the movie Bird Box is considered to be altruistic suicide and altruistic suicide according to opencollege.com is when social group involvement is too high expectations from a group is expectation from a group is being met at a very high level such as sacrifice for a cult or religion another example would be a martyr or a suicide bomber now the reason i put the suicides reflected in bird box into the category of altruistic is because had these individuals and the individuals I'm referring to are Tom, Greg, and Charlie in the movie, had they not been in the social situations that they were in and trying to protect and preserve the lives of those who that they, they were with, they would not have been suicidal that we know of based on the storyline. So they basically sacrificed themselves in order to save the group. And because of that, I believe that would be considered an altruistic suicide. Now, if there's someone watching who knows um, another category that they may have this may have fallen into, please let me know. Um, again, this is my perspective, what I saw in the movie, and that's just that. So I want to talk a little bit more about Tom. Tom is Mallory's love interest in the film. And Tom really represented the stage of grief where he's kind of accepted everything that's going on. He knows that there really isn't much to do that he, that he can do to change what's going on. He's done bar bargaining. He's not really angry about what's going on. He's gone into full protective mode in a way that he's protected those around him, particularly Mallory, boy and girl, is by reinvesting his energy 
and making life as normalized as he can for them. And that was reflected in the scene where he was telling girl and boy the story about when he was younger and he and Mallory got into an argument because Mallory was still in the phase where she's just basically in survival mode, which she said and which Tom said was not okay. He blatantly told her, you know, these kids deserve a life. Surviving and just making sure that they don't die is not a life and if you think about a time in your life where you may have been experiencing grief and a loss that's what it is you're in survival mode you're going from day to day just trying to get through each second each minute each hour and keep your mind together but you're really not enjoying life so Tom was actually a very very big breath of fresh air and unfortunately Tom had to sacrifice himself in order to save Mallory and girl and boy but I think Tom's perception of the death that was going on around him was strongly influenced by what I believe he expressed as his time in the military. So that's just something to think about as well. A lot of times people who are in environments where they're experiencing grief and loss and death on a regular basis seem to almost be numb to it. And it doesn't mean that they don't feel the feelings it's kind of like they've almost accepted that life and death are a part like death is a part of life and there's really nothing you can do about it i can honestly say that i know several funeral directors and medical professionals particularly who have basically adopted that standpoint um i wouldn't consider myself to be jaded or numb to death because i've experienced loss and I, I can imagine if, you know, someone close to me were to pass away, I don't think that initially I would have Tom's perspective and outlook on things. But when you come into contact with death and loss constantly, it does really form and shape your mind around the fact that some things are just a part of life. So that was a really interesting take on that viewpoint in this movie to me. Now, the second to last people that I want to discuss are boy and girl and the reason why I wanted to d discuss them in detail is because they represent innocence they represent children having to cope with a reality that they have no control over and they also have no real external connections other than the reality that was created for them by this situation both boy and girl were born basically at the same time in all of this chaos and in all of this madness. And thank God for Mallory who decided to take on the responsibility for caring for them. But in doing that and in keeping them safe, they lost really what a childhood is. And not only do I think they represent the, represent the innocence of childhood, I really think that they represent the internal workings of all of the other characters that were portrayed in the movie because at the end of the day everyone was scared everyone was confused about what was going on and in panic and survival mode but the thing that was interesting about boy and girl in the movie is that they were just so calm throughout everything and girl was actually very afraid of Mallory and did not trust Mallory um whether that was because she instinctively knew that she wasn't her mother or that because Mallory had such a hard external disposition towards them because everything that was going on and the things that she had experienced in her life, I don't know. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. But it they were just very interesting characters to me because they were troopers. I don't know that as a child I could have endured half of what they had to endure they were in some pretty terrifying situations and were portrayed as being stoic throughout. Now, what I found that was interesting was that Mallory's interaction with boy and girl changed once the threat of losing them became a viable and real threat. When she was almost at the safe place um, that they were going to in the movie, she lost them. And she then, that's when her demeanor changed. She broke down. She had to put bring that wall down and let them see her vulnerability. And that actually 
healed their relationship in that instance. And once that was done, girl began to actually develop a trusting relationship with Mallory and they were able to make it to the safe space. I also thought it was very interesting that all of the people who were surviving in the safe place for the most part were blind. Much like in everyday life, the movie Bird Box left us wondering why did all of this happen? When a loved one commits suicide, we're left with so many unanswered questions. And like with the movie, we may never know the cause or have an explanation for why this has taken place. But I'm very interested to know what you all saw in the movie, if you agree with my assessment, or if you have things to add. As always, my name is Joelle Simone Anthony. You can find me at www.thegravewoman.com. Please take time to subscribe to this YouTube channel, like, share, and comment on this video, and stay tuned for the next video in which I will discuss what I saw in the movie Aquaman. Live life, love hard, and I'll talk to you next time.